Hi, everybody. This is Naman. Um, I'm a product manager here at Stoplight, primarily looking at the governance piece of things. Um, and with, with the air and approaching, what we wanted to do was give you all a quick overview of what we have done over the past year for governance and primarily style guides. So in the past year or so, we've been launching these different public style guides, which are a set of rules that you can use to get started or kickstart your governance program with different themes, some aimed at making your open APIs better and some aimed at making your APIs better. So today, me and we have Phil with us, Phil Sturgeon, who is big in the API community and is going to be talking about some of the rule sets he's been working on. So we're going to give you all a quick overview of what uh, the different style guys that we've put out. Phil, do you want to introduce yourself before we get started with this? If I can just find the right buttons there. There we go. Um, hey, everyone. Yeah, um, so I've been... Uh, I'm Phil Sturgeon. I'm involved with Stoplight, helping them make a bunch of uh, cool spectral rule sets. Um, usually, you'll find me on GitHub somewhere doing open source stuff. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. All right, so we'll get right into it. Um, before before we get started and get into the rule sets themselves, um, just talking about why style guides and why why they're important. Um, API governance is a, is a term thrown around a lot. A lot, of the, a lot of companies are trying to focus on it, especially with a lot more APIs being built. And one of the main goals for API governance is bringing consistency across your API program. <clears throat> now, there are two different aspects to it. You're just a small company starting um, afresh, and um, you want to you want to start with best practices so that eventually when you get to this um, get to a larger API landscape, you do not have inconsistency there. And you're also following some good um, uh, practices around how your um, things are named, how your open APIs look, and um, things there are. But all, especially but this becomes an even bigger problem when you have a large number of APIs. Say you have hundreds of APIs being built across different um, geographical locations, different teams building them. And with new people coming in, what does good look like in your organization is a good thing to define. But also um, just making sure that everybody's following the same um, the practices and you're not having to have these conversations repetitively. And uh, one thing that we've really found useful to be for that is style guides and the tool called Spectral. Now, talking about what can you do to actually ensure consistency is what I was talking about. Establish and enforce a key set of rules. And what these rules are basically, for some organizations not using a tool, say like Spectral or other tools like the Open API is limited out there, um, you have a PDF document that talks about the different practices or different um, uh, different guidelines and what good looks like in your organization. So how do you version your APIs? How do you name your parameters? Or what do you need to put into an open API to make sure it passes through the whole review process? But that's kind of a cumbersome task in the sense that um, having those manual or having those PDF documents or some sort of standards out there is, is useful but it is hard to maintain, hard to enforce across a larger number of people. And for that, if you create these automatic linting rules, which a tool like Spectral or Stoplight can allow you to do, um, you can create a baseline as to what good looks like and make sure that those are enforced, those are enforced or at least everybody knows about them. They're in the right design environment. So you could bring them into the tools that your API designers and developers are using to build these APIs. What this helps to is um, your design reviews are now not about what your parameters should look like or what casing they should follow. They're more focusing on the business, um, business logic and like what the business usefulness of these APIs are. Um, while these best practices are already part of the workflow for these designers and developers to look at and already enforced within the design environment. You're in promoting best practices. If you're using a rule set, we'll talk about some that focus on security, like always adding authentication to the endpoints that you should add them, like your post endpoints. Um, you can do that using these linting rules too. And generally, once you have these best practices being enforced, you have a better developer experience because somebody who's coming in using five of your different APIs, 
doesn't have to figure out what all these different variations of it is. Everything looks similar, feels similar, and it's easier to use. And um, with the reduced design review time, you're also speeding up the time to you actually getting this API out into the market for it to be used. <clears throat> um, so we're going to talk about, and this, this applies both to somebody who's using Stoplight platform, um, but we're also focusing on the open source part of it, which is Spectral. So if you're, if you're a Stoplight user or you're looking to use Stoplight, what you've done is we've created these different um, set of rules around like in the screenshot that you can see JSON API or security. Um, you can use these style guides to actually just enable them within your workspace on, on a project or across your workspace and start enforcing or um, promoting these rules. So if you're a stoplight user and you're some, somewhere on the pro or enterprise plan, you're put to use these rules that we've put out that we'll be talking about. Or if you're a spectral user and you're not using stoplight right now, we hope you do in the future, um, you can actually just um, build these open APIs. Say you're doing this in VS Code, you're doing this in JetBrains or um, any, other, um, any other design environment that you have. You can make this part of your CI CD workflow where any of these rules are enforced as part of um, your CI where for reviews being made, you already know there are some errors, some warnings. And you can also go a step ahead and say that a pull request cannot be merged if some of these rules fail, depending on what the severity of these rules are. Um, we've talked about this a bit before too in some of our other webinars. So we'll just um, jump right into what those rule sets are now. Um, and for that, at least for the first few, I'll let Phil talk about some of the, what these templates are. Um, Phil, do you wanna share a screen or should this be fine? um let's uh we can share as we go through we've got um we've got a couple of slides for talking about the different ones haven't we yeah oh here we go perfect uh so the versioning rule set api versioning is a wildly controversial topic and the chances of me making one single rule set that would make everyone happy for all versioning didn't seem um particularly promising but what this aims to solve is um if you are using url versioning how can you leverage open API to not have everyone be incredibly confused? Um, there's a bunch of different things that go wrong when you uh, when you're versioning in open API. And some of it is just kind of redundantly putting the version in the path when you could put it in servers, just you know, take some extra space. Some of it is um uh mixing multiple versions in together can be really confusing because they start to reference various different shared bits, and then some of those shared bits change. Um are we should we just talk through these or do you want to try and have a little look at, at how some of them work um, um i i think we can do that in the um, demo at the end but right now if you demo at the end fantastic yeah um so yeah this one basically oh and it also um the goal of this rule set is to kind of avoid doing unnecessary things with version numbers so i have seen some people do um kind of uh, i do api consulting and help teams out and they have all this trouble where they've got um kind of patch level version information in their APIs and they're maintaining like 12 different APIs running all at the same time because they deployed a bug and it's a different API now and people don't know they should use the new one to get the bug fix so um this rule set just kind of says stick to stick to one version per open API keep it out the path so that you can't accidentally put it all over the place um and keep your version numbers to like major because there's not a lot of point in put, putting minor and patch version in there, which will hopefully help some people out. Because I have seen companies where they have 10 different <laughs> URL versioning standards in the same thing. So, um, yeah, that one's quite handy. What's the next one? Documentation. Uh, yeah, in an ideal world, you'd be able to just take any open API file and sling it into a documentation generator like Elements or Redoc or Swagger UI. Um, and it would, you know, ideally it would produce fantastic documentation, but that is not quite enough. Um, this rule set aims to point out the parts of open API that you should be leveraging in order to make really good um, documentation. And a very basic um, part is descriptions. If you haven't got descriptions in, people are just looking at the names of variables and that not that's not necessarily enough context. Um, Quite often, 
people think that you know it, it, it's unnecessary because you've got paths widgets get what's the description well it gets widgets man um and yeah obviously it, it gets some widgets but um when you start getting into we've got some patch endpoints you want to explain to people that that's a partial update for this thing and there might be you know when you're getting a collection it might have a default state um if you're getting events it might only show future events instead of past events and those are the things that people generally don't quite notice and and build their clients wrong <laughs> and you find out in production um so yeah descriptions are really handy um it talks about you need to supply an example or a schema um various things like that just to just to keep your open api useful so that when it goes into a doc generator it looks brilliant uh, let's have a look at that next one. Oh, wasp. Yeah. Um, it does more than just shout at you for using HTTP basic, but that's pretty useful by itself. Um, oh, wasp, if you aren't familiar with it is the, oh, oh, what is it? The open source web application security project or something. I mean, that's a close enough guess. They work on finding out what all of the largest API security, well, all of the largest like web um security issues are and they kind of rank them and they change them every couple of years and they will write documentation about those problems how to avoid those problems um and they kind of group them up into little special collections so we looked at their um their list of top api security threats and then we turned that into a rule set um covering as many of those uh, problems as we can so there's rules in this one that are like if you've got um, auto incrementing IDs for your resources, you know, um, get users one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, don't do that unless you want someone to download all of your data um, and make sure you have protection on on some of your on on your endpoints, things like that. Like, it, I've definitely forgot to put post. Uh, I, I forgot to put security credentials on a post before and just had random people creating stuff in my database. So these things do happen. And the goal of the um, the security rule set is not to tell you that your API is is perfectly secure, because obviously it's just looking at the what's been defined in the open API document itself. So it can't tell you whether what you're doing inside your code is good or not, but it can definitely spot obvious problems that you have declared in the open API. So it can help you. You know, just make just avoid common problems, basically. Um, over to you, Norman. Awesome. Thank you, Phil, uh, for some of these rule sets. Phil has done great work on some of these. So covering versioning, covering documentation, creating better open APIs and some of the security stuff gets you in a very good place in terms of just getting started with creating some of these rules. Moving forward, I think um, one other one other rule set that we put out there was URL style guidelines. So REST APIs, a big part of them is how these URLs look for you. One big one big discussion that um, everybody has is what's the casing for the path itself? What's the casing for path parameters? How do query parameters look? Where do you put query parameters in an open API? So this rule set is primarily focused at making these URLs consistent, following the best practices. We've looked at the large top companies building open APIs uh, or APIs themselves and seeing like what, what the best practices there are and then making sure that um, you can follow some of these. It's, it's a rule set that gives you some opinionated stuff on what, what, uh, what casing your path parameters should have or query parameters should have and where you should put them. But these are also a good guideline. And as we'll see in the demo as to, okay, this is a rule that says it should follow camel case. But if you want to go and use Pascal case, you can still just change a setting. But at least you have some guidelines on, okay, these are the kind of rules you need to create. You can get started with them and change them around. Um, the goal being building consistent URLs, not specifically saying this is the very and the only good way to do it. So, one one goal for open APIs is to define good open API design, but a a good chunk of open uh, why people build open build open APIs is downstream tooling. So you might be using a SDK or a code generator to build out SDKs or build out server side code. You might be using these open APIs to deploy to gateways or do other um, other um, stuff downstream. 
um, which is automated um, by the virtue of you building some open APIs and potentially code open APIs by these style guides. Um, this particular rule set, and we've gotten a few of these um, requests from our customers who use AWS API Gateway, and we've, we're certainly looking for suggestions on what other tooling can probably use rule sets like these. As AWS, while it supports a lot of open API uh, features, it is missing out on a few. Um, like the discriminator property is not supported or a particular version of an open API is what, it's, what is valid um, in the gateway itself. So th this list of rules is primarily you making sure that your designers and developers are building the right um, and using the right keywords, using the right open API description features that are supported within your tooling. In this particular case, the gateway itself. So once you deploy the open API or the API, it's not different from what you actually defined in the spec. Um, and I think there's a lot of potential for other, other rule sets around um, tooling. Um, like say, if you're using a code generator, you could have a rule set for the code generator itself, making sure like if enums are not supported by your code generator, make sure you stop that on the open API level and people find different ways, like putting them into the description um, and you're not creating um, inconsistency across your tooling um, and your pipeline. <clears throat> JSON API is, a, um, is another format. There's, there are not many opinionated ways to build APIs, but one that is popular and opinionated is the JSON API format. And what we've done here is taken some of the work that has been done by the open source community, tweaked it a bit and brought this into the Stoplight platform, where if you're using the JSON API uh, recommendations in terms of building open APIs and APIs, um, you can use this rule set and make sure um, you're following the standard in its, um, in its correction, not missing out on some of those things that it recommends. It also makes sure like if you're, if you're looking to use JSON API across your organization, one team's using it and the other is not. That is an inconsistency that you'd wanna avoid. And this rule set would help you do that by making sure that um, JSON API recommendations are being followed as you, as you build out these applications. Finally, the last one that we have put out is Zalando. And Zalando is an organization that has a, a good chunk of um, guidelines on how to build good APIs, what good API design look like, and what good open APIs look like. We've uh, codified that into a, guide, um, into a spectral rule set, which is available for you to use within the platform and um, on spectral. Um, if you're getting started, both JSON API and Zalando are good formats or good recommendations to get started on uh, in terms of um, following practices. And if you're already using it, then this rule set would help you help one for you to see what the adoption looks like within your organization right now and what you can potentially um, tweak to make it better. So these were the these were the different. Um, different style guides that we have put out there uh, for people to use, both Stoplight users, like I mentioned, and Spectral users. Um, we're not stopping here. We are, uh, we are, we're looking for um, suggestions as to what, what other things would you want um, as rule sets. If, you're already, if you've already built something on Spectral and you're looking for that, if you think that's going to be useful for the community, reach out to us and we can certainly make that part of these rule sets or a new rule set. Um, so I'm, what I'm trying to say is um, this is, we've tried to cover some of the bigger topics, but there's certainly more that we can do. And if you have recommendations or suggestions on what else you'd want to see, um, it would be great. What I want to do next is now just show you how this works within the platform itself and where these are, these are available and um, how you can practically use some of these. For that, um, with the primarily um, available at two places, we have this um, workspace on Stoplight called apistylebook.stoplight.io. Um, and this is where all of our public style guides that are available within the platform are available for people to look at. Um, the Stoplight style guide or the spectral rule set that um, 
that you have um, that you use when you're just starting with spectral that's available for here uh, for people to use. What I'm going to get into is some of these other ones that we've talked about too. Um, the first one that I can get into is the AWS API gateway. If I go into these, um, you can use this within the platform and I'll show how to do that. But if you're just looking to use it in Spectral, you can go to the export functionality here, export the Spectral file and start using it um, uh, within your CI. Um, some of the rules uh, for this gateway uh, rule set is like the def some of the properties not being supported, like default, exclusive, minimum, discriminator, any of. Um, the ones that are not supported are mentioned here. Um, the open API version that um, AWS Gateway supports, you can enforce that, how paths should look and um, what, uh, what other fields are not supported is covered in this. Uh, the next step for this AWS Gateway would be to cover some of the X extensions that Gateway um, Amazon expects and what the structure for them is. So that is something Spectral can do too. And we want to add on to this tool set by also covering some of those things. Um, we talked about the JSON API one. Um, it, um, if you look through the documentation and this is publicly available, um, it talks about some of the response codes that you expect in the JSON API, what the error object should look like and what the request object should look like. So all of these things are covered within the JSON API rule set. Uh, Zalando is similar in terms of the guidelines it put out. Um, before giving it to Phil to cover some of those the ones that he had um, covered within the presentation, we have a spell check one, which checks spellings within um, within the uh, within your open API. So if you put in a description and it has a spelling issue, you can use this rule set to enforce some of those um, or check for some of those spellings. Um, and we have one which enforces HTTPS, which is a basic one everybody should use that you should not be putting HTTP URLs into your open API or your APIs. So we have some of these. Um, the next one, do you want to talk about the versioning one or like what these are? Yeah, no, uh, maybe I can, I can next share screen and then. Uh... Oh yeah, go ahead. Let's do that. Nice. Yeah, I um I definitely need to use that spell check one. My spelling has always been atrocious and it will never change. And half the time I don't know if I'm meant to be writing English or, or or American. So um that would be pretty useful. Uh where am I going over here? We yeah, so this API stylebook's a great um place kind of collates together all the all the stuff we've been doing and um uh we're working on improving the documentation. Um but yeah, this one, um, really good job uh, by the team here of kind of showing off some some examples of what's good and what's bad. So if you want to learn a little bit more about what rules are available and uh, explanations about not just what they do, but why um, some of these some of these get pretty detailed. Um, so the OWASP top 10 is on there. The documentation and versioning is all on there. Um, but if you uh, we also release these as um, open source modules. So this is kind of how my brain often works a little bit more. I spend a bit more time in the CLI and they're the same thing. So, you know, you can have some of your team using the command line stuff. You probably use that in CI, CD. Some people use in the more um, product, um, you know, the shiny GUI, um, but they're all essentially the same thing. So if you want to work on contributing extra rules to them, um, you can do them on GitHub. Right, there's stoplight slash spectral OWASP rule set. There's um, stoplight spectral URL versioning. There's stoplight spectral documentation. I'm still working on the tests for this one, but um, over here you'll see instructions for how you can work with them. And in the CLI, um, you can install an NPM module. Um, and then in your projects, wherever you are, you can either reference that NPM module. If you're working in an environment where you can install an NPM module, then you can just put you can just put this URL here, um, and that's kind of like the hosted version. And you can even pick which version you would like. So, if I just show you kind of how this works, um, in I think I've picked what is this the Calendly. Um, so I've got a, a copy of the Calendly demo uh, open API locally, and I'm using that OWASP rule set URL and it will think about it for a little bit because there's quite a lot of rules in there and boom, it's found a bit of feedback. Um, now, a lot of this stuff 
is uh, is repeats. So you'll have things like, um, I was quite proud of this rule. Uh, you need to do either a 400 or a 422. Don't mind which one, but like you need to explain what happens if the request you know um, has bad validation because OWASP suggests that you should define all of your responses, even error validation. Um, and then it will also say, oh, hey, 429 response should be defined. Why are you not doing that? Because it's basically saying you, you should define rate limiting. And if you do have rate limiting in your API, you probably want to mention that in open API or you're not documenting what you're working on. Um, and then loads of other stuff. Uh, all success and fails should also have rate limiting headers, all this stuff. Um, it's just kind of hunt, uh, giving people hints and nudging them in the right direction towards making a more useful, secure API. And if someone comes to you and says, I have no idea what rate limiting is, um, then brilliant. That's a chance to talk to someone who's about to put an API into production without rate limiting. <laughs> so it can only help. Um, and if we have a look at, so that was OWASP. Let's have a little look at URL versioning. Chances of this one flagging anything up are pretty small. But again, you can just copy and paste that. And you could either put it into your um, spectral.yaml, uh, your like config file, or you can do it entirely in the CLI. And let's just get that out there. Eh, that'll do. Oh, version numbers should only contain major, not minor or patch what have they done here let's have a look oh can't even type um yeah they've got what sorts of stuff going on who knows too hard to find but yeah it's letting them know oh, it's because i've got like a million different files called open api on my computer but yes it's noticed that they've got um minor versions in there and why do you need to tell someone that you've just added a new feature without making any backwards compatible um breaks you can just add that feature and they don't need to change the version of the api they use to use that new feature they could just use it that's api evolution and it's cool um and uh the documentation one um i am just about to push a whole bunch of tests and, and stuff for this so if you wait until um about an hour after the panel then it will be it will probably be working properly <laughs> but uh yeah those are all all the ones i've been working on recently awesome thank you phil this was this is very good um so this was this is phil showing in terms of like if you're using this spectral open source tool and you're using the cli you could do this on your on your terminal itself or do this in your ci cd pipeline um i just want to take the same rule sets and say if you're a stoplight user how do you go ahead and um, start using some of these style guides that we've put out for um, for your workspace for your company itself so um, I've done uh, in, in this demo workspace of mine, what I've done is I've broken these down into two different style guides. Uh, the first one is primarily aimed at making open APIs better. So maybe this is the first step that you want to take before deciding on what your um, what what API recommendations or API design recommendations you give. You just talk about what good open API looks like. So create a style guide here. Uh, There's a style guide project, which is a special kind of stoplight project. And if we're going to manage style guides, these public style guides that we've been talking about are available here. So let's say I'm using I'm using um, the documentation rule set. I want to make descriptions and examples better, or like put them in there. Uh, like Phil talked about, we have the spell check one here, the default stoplight style guide, which primarily talks about open API validation, um, and the AWS API gateway because that's also aimed at um, and say if I'm using the gateway itself, uh, it's primarily aimed at not using some of those um, features that uh, open API um, that, that AWS gateway doesn't support. So I can I can get started with these. Um, I have all my inherited rules here. Um, and let's it contains things like I should always have my contact object defined. Maybe I do not want this. This is not a rule that I want to enforce. I can actually go ahead and disable this. Currently, this is a warning. I think this is very important for my company and also in turn it no error. That depends on what you think about this. The default ones or the default severities have been defined by stoplight, but you can go ahead and change them or disable them. 
So all these rules are now part of these inherited rules for the open API style guide. This is what a good open API should look like in my company. And I've added all these rules, um, turned off a few. And then for one, I've also created, just as an example, you can also create your own rules, you, some by duplicating the ones that you haven't inherited, but also going just and creating a new one from scratch, which is giving it a name, giving it a message, targeting something and saying, this is what it needs to have. Um, I have the open API style guide defined. I can test it out as somebody who's creating the style guide. I can test it out and see, um, uh, debug it here, test it against an open API, see the errors that it, give, it is giving, uh, either across all rules or turn off this thing and it should just show you the rule errors for this particular rule itself. This is the um, creation of the style guide itself and these rule sets that we've put out there really help you. So you should not have to create a lot of these local rules. And even if you have to, you can get started with the ones that you have. So the open API style guide is one piece. The other thing that I wanted to do was um, create a style guide for what good API design looks like. So I create an API style guide. And if I go into this one, um, we have the versioning one, which is what, how should I do versioning within my API, the URL style guidelines, I could have the JSON API one or the Zolando one, depending on what different formats I follow. And I have the OWASP top 10, which could also be in the open API style guide, but I just put it here. So this is, this is the, um, this is the recommendations for my organizations as organization as to what um, good API design looks like. Same if I test it out, it should show me the errors right here. And I can um, create these rules, think of what the ones that I want to disable. And then once these are published, the next step is for me to start using it or my designers to start using it. One thing that I can do is go into the governance tab here and set this as a default style guide. What this does, I have the API style guide and the open API style guide that I just showed you um, as the default ones, which means that any new projects that would be created in a workspace would have these enabled. And I'll show you that in a bit as to what that looks like. But let's say I have an existing project. If I go into that one, <clears throat> um, and this is not this wasn't using the style guide. I can go into the manage style guides and turn off the ones from the public. I can use the workspace style guides that I have, the API and the open API style guide, and um, go into the APIs tab, and I should in a bit see all the errors and warnings that um, that have been given. So what we're doing here is bringing bringing these errors, warnings, bringing these recommendations into the design environment itself. While I'm creating open APIs, I see that I'm not using the HTTPS protocol. I go in here, fix that, and that error should go away. So even for existing APIs, you can turn this on and see what problems might be. Um, there's no enforcement here, so you can still go ahead and choose to publish this but at least people are seeing the kind of issues that they have in their open APIs based on the recommendations that are being given. Um, same goes for somebody who's coming in and creating a new open API, a new project. So if I create a new project here, that should already start with the style guides that I've set as default. So anybody coming in new should see these errors and warnings right there. So let's say if I come in and create a new API, I would um, get the errors and warnings right here. As I, as I start and change this around, I can fix these, like putting in rate limiting header headers or what my path parameters should look like. Um, and this really helps from scratch make these recommendations part of the workflow. This would be the first step, making sure that people are using it, setting it as a default so new people already get it and making sure old people also enabled it. But um, you can also go ahead and use a CLI tool that Phil was showing and make this part of, enforce this as part of your CI CD. So let's say if somebody chose to ignore some of these errors and push those designs up into the CI pipeline as a review to, to be reviewed, um, one, um, you can stop merging if some of these errors are there or if it's just warnings or info. That can be part of the review process 
like I'm getting this, um, getting these um, hints here as to you might want to do this. Why aren't we doing this? Is this a good idea to ignore it? So instead of people looking through all that JSON or YAML, now they have um, all the information they need to at least talk about the recommendations that the organization has. So yes, this was the demo. Uh, now, if there, um, we have all the resources from today's webinar, which is all the rule sets that we talk about, talked about the blogs related to them, uh, mentioned, I, I know we'll, we'll be sharing these slides later too, but if you have any questions, um, we can talk about them at the 